Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah. Today we're going to dive headfirst into the world of random level generation using as usual Unity and the C Sharp programming language. I've already made a few tutorials on random level generation, both aimed at beginners. One on how to spawn random objects at random locations, the other on how to make a Binding of Isaac style dungeon. In this brand new tutorial series, we will create a random platformer level generation system, identical to the one found in the amazing game Spelunky. In this YouTube video, Mark Brown explains in detail how this random level generation works. Our goal will be to code this all out and bring it to life in Unity. So once you've checked Mark Brown's videos, I also urge you to read this blog post, which will explain how the level generation works in even more detail. Now, of course, all games are different, and so a level generation system that works for one game will most probably not fit the design needs for your game. So the main goal of this new tutorial series is to really flex your programming muscles, teach you programming techniques, and put you in a procedural level generation state of mind. It's also going to be loads of fun, so I hope you'll join me on this adventure, which should last 3 to 4 videos max. Once you're done, you can of course try building a whole game using this level generation system. That's completely up to you. Lastly, this tutorial series is aimed at intermediate level game developers. Basically, you should have a solid understanding of the basics of C Sharp and Unity before watching these videos. If not, you might find some stuff pretty hard and confusing. Before starting, here's also a big thank you to Joseph for his amazing financial support on Patreon. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is create the various quote-unquote rooms that will make up each level. We need to create a room with left and right openings, one with left, right and a down opening, another with a left, right and top opening, and lastly, a room with openings in all four directions. We'll then use these rooms to create a path the player can navigate, going from the top of the level to the bottom. In other words, a big challenge of this level generation is to create a clear path that isn't cut off anywhere, going from the start to the exit. As you can see here, each one of these level layouts has that critical path. However, in this example, there isn't that critical path. As you can see, the player would get stuck at this point and wouldn't be able to reach the exit. That is something we definitely don't want happening. Anyway, once the main path generated, random rooms will then spawn to fill up the rest of the level. Here, we don't need to worry about whether some of these random rooms are closed off or not, since they're not part of that critical path from the start to the exit. It. If the player really wants to access those rooms, he'll have to destroy the terrain using bombs, for example. So I'm going to create an empty game object, I'll reset its transform component, and I'll call it room LR for left right. You guessed it, I want this room to have openings on the left and right. I'll give this empty game object a little red gizmo so I can more easily see it in the scene view. Holding down control to enable snappy movement, I'll snap this room LR right here so it's placed in the middle of this section of the Unity grid. This is how big each room will be. Now of course you can make your rooms as big or small as you want. For those who don't know, you can tweak your snappy movement settings under edit snap settings. I currently have mine set to 0.5 for the X and Y axis, meaning that when I hold down control and move an object around the scene, that object will move of little 0.5 increments along the X or Y axis, which is really useful when you want to be very precise in your placements, as is the case right now. It's important this room LR empty game object is right in the middle of this area of the grid. With that done, I'll create another empty game object called Spawn Point and I'll reset its transform position. I'll then give it a yellow gizmo and parent it to the room LR empty game object. Holding down control for a snappy movement, I'll place it at the bottom left corner of my room. As you can see, this spawn point is placed right in the middle of this little square. Its job will be to spawn the little tile the player can then walk on. I've gone ahead and made a simple tile sprite. I'll add to it a 2D box collider and then turn this tile into a prefab. And I'll create the very first C-sharp script, which I'll simply call spawn object and drag and drop it 
onto the spawn point. Opening up inside of Visual Studio, I'll create a public game object array called objects, and in the start function, I'll want to instantiate a random object from that object's array. So I'll create an int variable called rand, and set that equal to a random number between zero and the amount of elements inside of the object's array. All I then need to do is instantiate an object in that object's array with an index equal to rand at the spawn point position and with no rotation. Back in Unity, I'll drag and drop inside of my objects array my tile prefab and hit play. And you'll see that the spawn point has indeed instantiated the tile. If I had multiple tile prefabs, each with a different visual, and I drag and dropped those into that same array, you'll see that each time I press play, I get a different tile because remember, we're choosing to spawn a random object from the objects array. I'll now duplicate this spawn point, hold down control for a snappy movement, and move it right here. And I'll repeat that process multiple times so as to create a room with left and right openings. Awesome. And hitting play, you'll see that I indeed get a cool room made up of these tiles with left and right openings. If I had a character, he could run around and jump inside of this room with ease. Seeing that the room is made up of tiles, it would also be pretty easy to make all this destructible, like in Spelunky, and create holes in the level using bombs for example. Anyway, I'll now turn this room LR into a prefab, and now I'm going to go ahead and make some more rooms, such as one with left, right, and a bottom opening, which I'll also turn into a prefab. Another with left, right, and a top opening, and lastly one with openings in all four directions, which leaves me with four room prefabs. Alright, it's now time to create the path going from the start of the level to the exit. In this tutorial series, I'll be making a level like in Spelunky, which is 4 rooms wide and 4 rooms long. So I'll use a simple square sprite with a box collider to define that area. And I'll then make an empty game object called Level Generation. I'll then make a new C -sharp script called Level Generation, drag and drop that onto our newly made empty game object and open it up. So I want to randomly choose a starting position to spawn the first room of the level. So here, here, here or here. To do so, I'll make a transform array called starting positions, and in the start function, I'll create an int variable called rand starting pose, and set that equal to a random number between zero and the amount of elements inside of the starting positions array. Then I'll set this level generation game object's position equal to a random starting position. I'll hop back inside of Unity and create an empty game object called Pose1. I'll give it a little blue gizmo and then snap it to the center of this room area in my level. I'll then duplicate it and move that to the center of this area and I'll repeat that two more times. These are my starting positions. Now I'll select my level generation game object and lock the inspector so as to easily drag and drop all of these starting positions inside of that array. And hitting play a few times, you'll see that each time my level generation starts, it's a random position in the level. Great. Now I'll create an array of type game objects called rooms. We'll obviously be drag and dropping all our different rooms inside of this array. With that done, I'll just instantiate the first room of the array at the level generation's current position and with no rotation. So back inside of Unity, I'll drag and drop all my room prefabs inside of the rooms array and hit play. And as expected, a room spawns at a random starting position in the level. Now it's time to spawn more rooms in order to create a path going from the start of the level to the exit. So what we first need to do is define a direction in which our level generation is going to move. Will it move left and spawn a room to the left of the starting room? Will it move right or will it move down? So I'm going to create an int variable called direction, which I'll set to be equal to a random number between 1 and 5 in the start function. Remember that the the last number we type here, in this case 6, is included. Now I'm going to create a new function called move. In this function, I'll want my level generation to move in a certain direction depending on the value of my direction variable and spawn a certain room. So I'll start by creating an if statement checking whether direction is equal to 1 or 2. If it is, then I'll decide to get my level generation to move right. So I'll create a vector2 variable called new pose and set that equal to a new vector2 that has the level generation 
generation's current x coordinate plus a certain amount, which I'll store inside of a float variable called move amount, for example. And for the y coordinate, I'll just leave that at the player's current y position. I'll then set the level generation's position equal to that new position. So in Unity, I'll set move amount equal to 10. This way, the level generation, if direction is equal to 1 or 2, will move of 10 units to the right and spawn a room. So yeah, I'm typing out 10 because each room is separated by 10 units. Alright, I'll now check whether direction was equal to 3 or 4. If it was, I'll copy and paste these three lines of code, simply changing this plus into a minus, so that the level generation moves left instead of right. And lastly, I'll check whether direction was equal to 5. And if that's the case, then I'll move down by decreasing the level generation's y position with move amount instead of its x value. You'll notice that there's slightly less chance that the level generation moves down instead of right or left. Of course, this is purely up to you. You can very well choose to give each direction an equal chance of happening. Now I'll simply instantiate a room from my rooms array after these if statements, and set direction equal to a random number between 1 and 5 again, so that the level generation continues building our procedural map, and doesn't simply move in a straight line right, left, or down. Before heading back into Unity to test things out, though, we first need to call this move function. So I'm going to create a float variable called time between room and another called start time between room, which I'll set equal to 0.25 by default. In my update function, I'll then check whether time between room is less or equal to 0, and if it is, I'll call my move function so that the level generation moves in a random direction and spawns a room. I'll also set time between room equal to start time between room, so that I need to wait 0.25 milliseconds before my level Level generation moves again and spawns a new room. Of course, if time between room isn't less or equal to zero, I'll slowly decrease its value using minus equals time dot delta time. And now I'll head back into Unity, make sure start time between room is equal to some small value, and hit play. And you'll see that indeed the level generation is moving around the scene, spawning rooms it's not at all working the way we want it to. Not only is it spawning rooms on top of one another, but it's also breaching the limits we established earlier. And cherry on the cake, there's no end to this level generation. The level generator is going to keep spawning rooms ad infinitum. So there's plenty cool things to be done before we can call this random level generation complete. For now though, great job for having watched the whole video. I hope you're as excited as I am to complete this project. If you have any problems or don't understand something related to this video, don't hesitate asking me a question in the comment section down below or via the BTP Discord server, and me or some other member of the community will try helping you out. You can expect episode 2 to come out in 2-3 to three days. There we will complete the code that gets our level generator spawning a clean path from the start to the exit of the level. Until then, you can support me and my channel by hitting the like and subscribe buttons. It's just so motivating and appreciated. Also, consider following me on Twitter, where lately I'm posting all of my Inktober drawings. Lastly, here's a big thank you to my patrons for their amazing financial support. You guys are amazing. Okay, stay tuned, have a great day, cheers!